what you're thinking. Greg's never looked this good in a dress. And he's even shorter than normal, even with six inch heels. And he's smiling. <laughs> Surprise! It's me, Emily. Yeah. 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 Ow. Like a tiny ghost of Christmas present. Because I'm celebrating the holiday today. Because this year, COVID robbed me of Christmas with my family. COVID robbed us of our studio audience. And it robbed me of my Christmas Eve feast of the seven fishes, the Italian tradition of eating seafood and yelling. <laughs> so to make up for it, we are having a feast tonight. Not actual food, Jimmy, don't get excited. <laughs> <laughs> it's Emily's Feast of Seven Jokes. Emily's Feast of Seven Jokes. <laughs> In New Year's Eve news, Omicron fear mongers are warning people to stay away from New York's Times Square celebration. Even though previous crowds were exposed to something much worse, Anderson Cooper and Kathy Griffin. <laughs> Thank God it'll be me hosting in Times Square this year. See you at 10 p.m. Eastern on Fox News. Boom. Germany's also banned large group gatherings, but you know who's never banned large gatherings of Germans? France. <laughs> China's Wuhan Institute of Virology recently hosted a conference on lab safety, to which the world responded, a little late, guys. <laughs> <laughs> In a recent segment on COVID safety, CNN's Dr. Lena Wen admitted cloth masks don't stop transmission of the virus. They also don't stop CNN hosts from grabbing your ass. <laughs> Today, New York Mayor Bill de Blasio said he doesn't believe in shutdowns, despite having shut down the city for months. He then added, quote, I also oppose letting criminals roam free to murder people. <laughs> <laughs> Chris Tucker turned down a $10 million payday for a sequel to the awesome movie Friday, saying he's too mature to be seen behaving badly on screen anymore. But producer Ice Cube has found a replacement who has no qualms about cursing or smoking weed on camera. <laughs> <laughs> In a CBS News interview, Vice President Kamala Harris said her biggest failure was not getting out of D.C. more. But for once, I actually agree with Kamala. I'd love to see her get out of DC permanently. <laughs> Thank you all. This has been Emily's Feast of Seven Jokes. Yeah. So by this point, you may be wondering how the little sister got the keys to the car. Is this like in the Goonies, where the kids let the air out of Brand's bike tires so they get a head start? No, Greg prefers a tricycle. <laughs> is Greg tied up, naked, with duct tape over his mouth, dumped in the girls' locker room? Wait, no, that was him in high school. <laughs> is he draped over the side of Kilmeade's hot tub, naked, three <laughs> bottles of wine deep? Wait, no, that was him on Christmas. <laughs> no, I'm actually sitting here for one reason. I beat him in a good old-fashioned card game. You want to play poker against me? Straight poker. Not that kind of game. We don't work for Andrew Cuomo. This card game. Exactly. The kind Greg loves. It combines two of his favorite passions. And I never turn down an invitation. Especially not with the high stakes of the keys to the kingdom for one night. Because the one thing no one bets on is the little sister having the best poker face and outlasting them all. Emily, good to see you uh, got your real estate license. You're like a hot topic uh, real estate sake. agent. Anyway. I'll take it. Actually. You're a goth. Awesome. You sell gothic houses. Here's Emily from 25 years ago. Oh, wow. <laughs> you've, ch you've changed. But I totally support the transition and the decision. I'm the number one late night host, <laughs> Emily. I'm not, some, I'm not somebody you can push around. You make me sick. And for that, you have to sit out the segment. <laughs> Straight to bed. Straight to bed, like you always do. Mm -hmm. Up at the crack of dawn. Yep. Uh, good for you, you <laughs> psychopath. <laughs> oh, I sat there and took it. But just like Andy Dufresne, Veronica, the Frog Brothers, Ronald Miller, the Monster Squad, and Kylie Richards in her oft-overlooked role as Ellie Curtis in Watcher in the Woods, the underdogs always come out on top, except in Rocky One. That's why I'm here tonight, as a living, breathing message of hope, 
like a tiny ghost of Christmas future. Not just for this hour, but for the long haul. In the immortal words of Yoko's boyfriend, it will all be okay in the end. If it's not okay, it's not the end. 2021 has sucked, no doubt. Look who's in the White House. Look who's not in the White House. Half of us are in lockdowns, under mandates. Bill Cosby is free, and yet Paul Wieland is still imprisoned. China is experimenting with hypersonic missiles, and our military is experimenting with diversity training. <laughs> the only thing that grew bigger than our federal government this year was the criminal liability of CNN producers. <laughs> the world is mourning the loss of Captain Von Trapp, Raider Nation's John Madden, Screech, Clary and Joe DeVito's favorite movie, Steel Magnolias, and Rose and Moonstruck, <laughs> and the genius mind behind Lestat. The mainstream media, encouraged by feckless elected officials, played an attention shell game where COVID played on loop, while urban implosions, the southern border record surge, skyrocketing homicides, disconnected public schools, opioid overdoses, a social war waged on law enforcement, and Americans left behind in Afghanistan barely received any coverage. The media did keep us well informed, however, on who would host Jeopardy. <laughs> there were other stories too, stories that deserved our attention, our admiration, our disgust. But where was the media? MSNBC was busy chasing down jury buses, sure, but what's everyone else's excuse? Where was the coverage when an escaped prisoner on the lam was finally caught after venturing out to buy Call of Duty? <laughs> Where were the headlines when teens dumping a murdered body in the woods were caught because they dutifully left their hazard lights on? Where were the media alerts when six colossal dumbasses kidnapped and held for ransom a victim just steps away from an NYPD training facility? You can imagine how that turned out. <laughs> but in the interest of fairness, I have to hold the mirror up to this show as well. I borrowed one of the 10 in Joey's office. <laughs> it's true. Even Greg missed a huge story this year, likely the largest story of the year, which is shocking, honestly, because we heard it from the source himself, from Channing Tatum. Yes, great news for America, Greg and me, there will be a Magic Mike 3. Not sure why this hasn't headlined every episode of Gutfeld since, but earlier this month, it was confirmed Two of the greatest movies of all time will now be part of a trilogy of human perfection. So take heart, America. 2022 will be better than 2021. Or at the very least, it'll have better abs. <laughs> yeah, despite all our differences, the one thing Greg and I have in common, the one love we share, is Magic Mike. <laughs> Watching and performing. So in our shared great anticipation, of the release of Magic Mike 3 next year, I put together what I knew Greg would love, a Gutfeld rendition of the most engorging, or engrossing, <laughs> the most delightful performance not on Broadway. I give you Gigantic Greg. What if Brian Stelter loses weight? All right, guys, it's time for our rehearsal for Gigantic Greg. Great news, I invited Channing Tatum to come. Oh. I know. Bad news, the restraining order is still in effect, and so I'm not allowed within 50 feet of him. But you know what? We don't need him. We have all the talent we need right here. Ready, dancer number one. Love the method acting, but let's ramp up the energy. Good day, guys. How are we feeling tonight? I'm bringing the thunder from down under. Great rhythm, Dean. Are unicorns Australian? Can you do something funny, Joe? You're a clown. But I'm so much more than that. Good try. Let's try not scaring the audience. Hey, great job by the way. Whoa, 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 whoa. Great use of space. This isn't a duet. Where I'm from, this is how we say hello. 
last time, gigantic Greg. Let's do this! And five, six, seven, eight, and one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Oh, maybe we need a different show in common with less dancing. <gasps> Sex in the City! Yes! I got Miranda. Shotgun Charlotte. <laughs> Let's welcome tonight's guests, Fox News' own Magic Mike, our bionic half-robot, half-Aquaman, Johnny Joey Jones. Yeah. Fox News' tragic Mike, comedian and host of Fox Across America, Jimmy Fallon. Fox News' hemorrhagic Mike, gushing out jokes, comedian Joe DeVito. Yeah. And Mike's hot sister, Fox News contributor <laughs> Kat Tim. <laughs> All Yo. right, Jimmy, we just covered a lot of ground. A lot went on. <laughs> this was a lot to hit a guy with who looks like a, D, a mall Santa who got a DUI. Yeah. <laughs> he really came to me with high hopes. Otherwise holds. known as a mall Santa. <laughs> <laughs> Every single one. <laughs> it's so amazing right now. You get like five DUIs because of COVID, they're out of Santas. They yeah. just keep bringing me back. It's amazing. <laughs> they just got to bring me back in, keep the kids far away. Um, I, I didn't know that you guys are obsessed with Magic Mike. But I love the idea of Magic Mike because it is the cinematic equivalent of being single so long you buy a cat, you know? <laughs> they should give every woman who buys a ticket to Magic Mike a free scoop of litter with their purchase. What? It is, I it's a just... horny cat lady movie. The, the movie took in $167 million last time around, but it took forever to count because they paid in singles. <laughs> <laughs> the last flight I was on, there was literally a whole row of us and we were all watching it and everyone loved it. But I love, <laughs> what I love about it is that my rumor worked and so now everyone literally thinks Greg is obsessed with medicine. <laughs> yes. I just love that everyone obsessed. loved it. Who are you flying with, the Golden Girls? Cat <laughs> <laughs> was there. Joey, that skit is what I envision the Marine Corps barracks look like after hours. Is that true? Yeah, we pretty much get naked and look at each other, slap each other on the butt. Yes. Um, and I'll up. tell you, I'm a big chafing scrotum fan. Um, <laughs> I, I like his work. I, I've never seen Magic Mike, though. I've seen where he played a Marine. There's, there's literally some movies called The Marine, and it's like the Marine again, and, and he does a good job, but uh, is Magic Mike about dudes taking their clothes off? Is that what I'm figuring out here? Yeah, I've never Loosely. Mm -hmm. Taking their loose clothes off? <laughs> I don't know. Wear a lot of is, it, is, it about, is it. it about a bunch of stripper boys or just one? I never saw it. It depends on who is in the spotlight in your eyes. It's really about a bunch of them, but there's only, I mean, let's face it, there's one, there's one Magic Mike, <laughs> and that's Tanny and Tatum. <laughs> Joe DeVito, okay. do you think Greg is missing us right now? Should we call him Gigantic Greg, actually, from now on? I That's will not be. <laughs> <laughs> I think um, right now Greg is in a ditch inside Kat's basement, <laughs> putting the lotion in the basket. <laughs> when he's going to get released. Uh, by the way, were you trapped in a blockbuster video for about a decade? Your, your movie references seem to be very much You saved in. it with Rocky. Thanks. Though. I was I was lost until <laughs> you like, and Rocky, I'm like, yeah. DeVito wrote that line. <laughs> Everything else was Did me. I? So, Kat, what do you think about the stories that the media missed? There were really important ones. My wedding. There you go! <laughs> and the honeymoon is gonna be an even bigger story because it's taken so long to have one. I know, but I keep saying, we're gonna, it's, we're just, how? It never ends, we're gonna end up having to go, go to Poughkeepsee <laughs> in two weeks. I've never been, it's oh, either. It's, it's actually lovely this They'll time They'll probably treat me great. <laughs> no. I would be the queen of Poughkeepsee. I don't <laughs> doubt it. I'll see you guys there. Uh, yeah, a lot of stuff there. Um, you know what? I don't know how people keep missing that. It, it's not okay uh, if it's not the end. It'll be. A, I don't get that, because the end oh. is the worst part. You die. No, the end <laughs> is the best part. It's like when they kiss, or when they is walk it? down the aisle, or when like the bank is robbed, or you know, it's it's something it's something awesome, right? I don't okay. know. I don't know of anything that ends with just a kiss. I mean, we're all adults, right? <laughs> 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 are, we, are we are we are we in seventh grade? Uh, well, listen. Well, on the Hallmark Channel yeah. and on this channel, we just ended. I was going to say, yeah, this, this time of year it ends. <laughs> they kiss, it snows, they play some terrible Christmas music, and then the exact same movie with the exact same gay actors kissing women comes on again. <laughs> <laughs> Every Hallmark Channel Stop movie. It. And they all get five do, stars. Do you know that like 80% of the Hallmark Channel's ratings are guys just ragging on the movies while their women watch them? Who are you, Roger? No, Ebert? that's not true. <laughs> not my house. Cam <laughs> loves the movies. I love Cam the movies. loves the Hallmark They're, Channel. Wow. And I say, turn this <laughs> off. And he won't turn it off. 
Yeah, you, that's they what he's throw doing. some twist in there which, every now which, and then. Which, which which tells me Cam will be going to see. I Magic said, if Mike. you don't turn this off, yeah. I'm with gonna go me. back to my hometown and meet a guy who owns a bookstore. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. All right, Joey. Final question. Yeah. Again, as a Marine. When you hear that someone ventured out of being on the lam to buy Call of Duty, and that's what got him caught, does it make you shake your head? Well, you know, I have a 12-year-old son who really likes video games, so I don't know, like, if it were him, I might be kind of proud, you know? Like, <laughs> like, you get it, man, you took the initiative. But for a, grown, for a grown man, you know, it's probably not the thing to do, you know? I'm not a big video game guy. I owned a uh, PlayStation one time, and I traded it for speakers for my truck, and I traded those, I think, for, it doesn't matter what I traded those for, actually. Um, <laughs> so I don't get the video games, the Call of Duty stuff. I, I don't understand it. I, I kind of did Call of Duty one time. Uh, yeah. Exactly. Hey, Sean Hannity here. Hey, click here to subscribe to Fox News YouTube page and catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis. You will not get it anywhere else.